everyone, it's Alyssa and welcome to You Can Learn Math. Today is about intersecting chords in circles and the angles they make. This is not talking about the properties of chords. We say we have a circle, there it goes, and I have two intersecting chords. Chords are lines that Cross the circle completely, they don't necessarily go through the center. If it goes through the center, that's specific, it's called a diameter. So it just goes through the circle. Now there are theorems about how the lengths of these pieces relate to each other. That's not what this video is. This video is talking about these angles and how they relate to the arcs in the circle. Now if you're looking for a video on central angles, central angles in a circle or inscribed angles in a circle, those are in uh, separate videos, links are down below. And I'm also going to be doing videos very shortly about angles with tangents and secants where the angles are outside the circle. That will be coming up soon. Links will be down below as well. All right, so here we have a circle and we have two intersecting chords. Now, if I just look at these two lines that are in here before I actually talk about why it's special that it's in a circle, if I just had two lines out here by themselves, no circle in sight, and I looked at these angles, there is something you've probably seen before in geometry talking about vertical or opposite angles. It depends on your book what they're called. And what it means is when I have intersecting lines, the ones that are on opposite sides of that intersection are the same. So these two would be the same and these two would be the same. Those are vertical or opposite angles. So that's true when these lines, these intersecting lines are inside the circle. Just being inside the circle doesn't change this. So those two angles in blue are the same and these two in red are the same. Now that doesn't necessarily get us any closer for now, figuring out what the angle measures are of these, but there is a fact about circles that's going to help us out a lot. As you may recall, either in class or from watching the previous video on central and inscribed angles, when I have a circle and then I have an angle that is going out and touching the circle, this little piece of the circle that it contains is the intercepted arc. Intercepted arc. You're going to hear that over and over and over again. So for these blue angles, this and this, these two would be the intercepted arcs. And for the red angles, this and this. <laughs> Let's turn off that ink to shape feature. There we go. This and this, those two would be the intercepted arcs. Okay, so if I wanted to explain this formula in words, opposed to in ciphers. But yes, if I wanted to explain this in words as opposed to a formula, I would say that an angle in a circle formed by two chords is equal to one half the sum of the intercepted arcs. Okay, now like that may be a little bit difficult, but this is likely how it's going to be written in your uh, math textbooks. So what does this mean? An angle in a circle formed by two chords. So this could be referring to this angle, this angle, this one, or this one. Each of those angles are angles in a circle formed by two chords. So let's look at this blue one over here, and I'm going to really highlight it. What is that angle equal to? It's equal to half the sum of the intercepted arcs. And you go, what are its intercepted arcs? It only has one intercepted arc, right? But like we said, 
This angle is the same. These two angles are the same as each other. So what arcs are they as a team intercepting? They're intercepting this one over here and this one over here. So I need to add those two together, their degree measures, and divide by two. Multiply by a half, same difference. So I'm averaging them. That's all it is. I'm averaging those two arcs. So if I was going to write this as a formula, so if I wanted to say cos A, B, C, that really stand out there, D and E, then the measure of angle A, C, B would be equal to one half the sum of the intercepted arcs. So that again is AB and DE. And I could also say the same thing about the measure of angle DCE. It would be, ditto, the same thing. Because as mentioned, those two angles are the same. And this is going to be true for, let's change my color here. Let's go to orange. For ACD and BCE, they are going to be each equal to one half the sum of the intercepted arcs. Let's put some numbers in here and see what it actually does. So let's say I'm asked, what is the measure of angle ACB? And I'm told that this arc AB is 62 degrees and this mark arc <laughs> DE is 30 degrees. Well, I plug those in. Those are the intercepted arcs, 62 and 30 degrees. And I'll get my angle ACB. Well, 62 plus 30 is 92. And one half of 92 is 46. So the measure of angle ACB is 46 degrees. And so is the measure of angle DCE. Now, if you know one of this pair of angles that are created by this intersection, you're going to know the other one as well because they are, to use our geometry term, supplementary. They make a line. Together, they equal 180 degrees. So these two angles there, the purple and the orange, they make 180 degrees together. So now I know angle BCE is 180 minus 46 or 134 degrees. And so is this one. This is the, the straightforward sort of beginning problems you're going to get. It is incredibly likely, in fact, I'm going to guarantee it, that very quickly they're going to add in some variables. They're going to bring back algebra. No! Yeah, I know. It's, you think it's gone? It's never gone! And what is that going to look like? It is most likely going to look something like this. They might ask, they might say this is equal to 2x and this is equal to x and this right here is this angle on the inside here. Let's say it's equal to 45 degrees. What is x? We use our same formula, we plug things in, and then we use our algebra skills to solve for x. So here, I know, I don't know the arc AB or arc DE, I don't know those measures, that's what I'm trying to figure out. I do know the measure of angle ACB, that is 45 degrees. I'm given that AB, the arc AB is equal to 2x, and I'm given that the arc DE is equal to X. So I can add those together and I get one half times three X equals 45. Just because I'm not a huge fan of fractions, I'm gonna get rid of that fraction instead of multiplying it one half times three X. I'm gonna multiply both sides by two to get rid of that one half. If you wanted to multiply one half by three X first, it's fine, you're gonna get the same answer either way. But I'm gonna multiply by two to get rid of that one half. 
So I have 90 on the left and 3x on the right. I'm going to divide both sides by 3 to get rid of that 3 right there. 90 divided by 3 is 30. x is equal to 30. If they then wanted to ask a further question and say, what are the values of or the measures of arc DE and arc AB, just plug x in there. And DE is going to be 30 and AB is going to be 60. This type of problem is very common. They're likely to put um, X is in for one of these and say solve for X. Be very careful with these types of problems. Make sure you know exactly what they are asking for. If they are asking for the X, give them the X and nothing else. If they're asking for the angle measures, do that. Please don't assume that they want one or the other because inevitably when you make that assumption, it's going to be the wrong one. I hope you enjoyed that today. Um, if it was helpful, useful in any way, please like, share, subscribe. You know the drill. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you have a great day. See you later. Bye.